This video is an excerpt from the Phi Parallel Programming Language Training Series. The series will be made available for purchase on DVD in its entirety. Copyright 2011, TechnoVenture Incorporated. In this segment, we will introduce basic declarations in a Phi Parallel Programming Language. Before we examine a generalized declaration, let's define the term item as an identifier with its associated type information created through a declaration. Items are always associated with type information, but they don't necessarily have values. I also want to define the term datum as it is used in Phi. A datum is an item that is an instantiation of a type and is individually assigned a value beyond the default for its type. In the fluid sense of the word, plural for datum is data, but when we are talking about multiple instances of these, we say datums rather than data. Just as there may be many individual fish of the same species in a fisherman's net, there are many species of fishes in the sea. Also, many people keep their fish in aquaria at home, but others prefer to visit aquariums that are distributed among the larger cities. The plural datums, while sounding funny at first, will emphasize that we are talking about multiple instantiations and not just a hodgepodge collection of data in general. As we talk about declarations, we will be using special language syntax specifications. These language description tools follow a system similar to a convention that is known in the programming language industry as Bacchus Nauer Form, often abbreviated as BNF. Let's now look at a legend that lists some of our syntax rules. When text appears in white with the Phi basic font, the text should appear explicitly as shown. When an italicized word is shown in blue, suitable replacement text should be substituted by the programmer. The following four sets of double delimiters are used to indicate how many instances of the elements between matching delimiters are required for the syntax. These special Unicode delimiter characters are not part of the Phi language, so they should not be confused with characters that are part of the language syntax. When a choice of more than one element is possible, alternatives will be separated with commas. Delimiters and their commas are all shown in red. Double parentheses indicate that one and only one element from a list of alternatives may appear in the syntax. When the choice list is delimited with double angle braces, only one element may appear or not. When a choice list is delimited with double square brackets, zero or more elements are permitted in the syntax. And finally, when the choice list is delimited with double curly braces, one or more elements may appear in a sequence of syntax elements. An item's identifier or name always begins with an alphabetic character. This must be drawn from the official subset of 254 Unicode characters used for names in Phi. These include upper and lower case alphabetics as well as the underscore. The Phi language is case sensitive as in C. Following the mandatory leading alphabetic character, zero or more alphanumeric characters may follow. These must belong to a superset of the aforementioned simple set augmented by the ten numerical characters zero through nine. So let's now look at a generalized declaration of an item in Phi. This form is used in global and local declarations. The items category appears first. When present, this is usually a key word. Next is the shared type. This consists of zero or more linkages and a root type. 
The shared type information composed of linkages and root type is followed by a colon. Following the colon comes a list of one or more item names that are being declared. These are separated by commas. Each item being declared can have additional linkages unique to itself, but they all share the common type. The list of items as well as the declaration statement itself is terminated with a semicolon. Declarations for enumerations, functions, and objects are somewhat more specialized, so they will be discussed separately later on in this series. Central to any declaration statement is the colon. In Phi, if you have no colon, you have no declaration. This shorthand notation allows a programmer to declare more than one item that share a common root type. This flexibility is not available for arguments in formal parameter list functions or members of compound data structures because these must always be declared individually. The specific keywords corresponding to category declare the kind of item that is being declared. In this discussion, it is either a class, a type, a name, or a datum whose specific keyword denotes a storage class. Storage classes and issues dealing with scope will be discussed in a later lesson. Classes and types are not permitted to define more than one item in a declaration. This is because their declarations are often expanded to define operations on their data structures, which is how objects are defined in Phi. We will cover that topic much later on in the series. If the category is type and the type is built on a class, then the class name is also included in the specification. Types defined on type classes automatically inherit all of the operations that are defined on their classes. Otherwise, new types lose most of the operations, if any, that are defined on their base types. If you want to abbreviate a type specification for the purpose of simplifying further declarations without losing the operations that are available on their base types, just use the keyword NAM instead of TYP. The keyword NAM is simply a convenience to consolidate type information into an identifier. It does not create a new type per se. For this discussion, a linkage is one step in a type specification that does not contribute to the base type of the items being declared. A series of linkages connects an identifier with its base type in the specification sequence. Keep in mind that a root type that is given in a declaration may actually contain one or more linkages in its definition somewhere else before an actual base type is reached. Base types are terminals for any type specification. Each linkage implies how the item must be addressed, subdivided, or accessed in order to get to a single element of its base type. The basic linkages are pointer to and array of. Root types are always the last part of the shared type specifications, which immediately precede the colon. These can be any of the following. Class, type, including predefined types, name, record, or union. Here is an example showing the difference between a root type and a base type. We define PTR to be a pointer to root. If we just looked at this declaration of PTR alone, we might falsely assume that its root type named root is also a base type and therefore a terminal. But if we look at the declaration of root, we see that it is an array of count 10 of type base. Because it was declared with NAM instead of TYP, root is not a base type because it is an array. In this example, we will assume that base is itself a base type, but it may not be. As in C, there is a difference between the way arrays are declared and the way they are used in executable statements. In type specifications, 
An expression appears between the square brackets to define the dimension count of an array. This is evaluated at parse time. During runtime, what appears between square brackets within an executable statement serves either to subdivide or to reorganize the array for further processing. In type class declarations, array dimension counts can remain undefined by using empty square brackets where the expression defining the dimension count is missing. This is done when the type class applies to all types that differ by dimension count. Here we say dimension count and avoid use of the word size because in phi size means the number of bits or bytes that make up a data structure. Then to define a specific type on that class, just prefix this declaration with type of, replace the keyword CLS with the name of the class, fill in the array count and replace the class name with the specific type name. Keywords are shown in red. The declaration of items A and B given here on top is equivalent to the two individual declarations given below. Note that the shared type is replicated for each of the two items being declared. The shared type logically follows and is low order to the individual linkages associated with each item in the compound declaration. Individually, A is declared to be of type pointer to fish, while B is an array of count 10 of pointer to fish. Except for the presence of semicolons, the individual declarations are shown the way they would appear in formal argument lists to functions and as members of compound data structures. The flexibility of this syntax that allows you to define more than one item in a single statement using shared data type information is limited to global and local datum declarations. This feature is a convenience that permits the programmer to define more functionality using less text. Let's now look at an example of a type definition in Phi and compare it to its equivalent declaration in C. Looking at the Phi example, we read, define a type name to be a pointer to an array of count 10 of pointers to root. Notice that the root type is declared up front even though logically it should appear at the end. The reason for this is so you don't have to wade through a lot of code in order to find out what the root type is. Declarations in all of these forms are equivalent. Which of these two declarations is more obvious in its intent? In this segment, we define some terms and examine some rules that will be useful in writing declarations in the Phi Parallel Programming Language. During the next few lessons, we will look more closely at the specifics of declarations.